Welcome everyone to the first episode of Unset Talks podcast interviews, where we interview alumni working in big corporate companies and good companies and startups. So with me today is Rohan Gupta, who is working in NXP, which is a dream company for electronics and communication engineering students. Hi Rohan, how are you? Yeah. Hi Raga. Hi. Uh, how about you? I'm fine. I'm good. So first of all, I would like to thank you for coming here on this show and to guide the coming generation of students. Yeah, I think uh, Raga, uh, this is a great uh, platform for all the students. Uh, your, uh, this is a great initiative from your side. Uh, as college graduates, we also felt some needs, uh, like many needs of uh, such platforms or such videos which have worked uh, very much. Yeah, I guess uh, this is all we needed at that time uh, in order to uh, be successful or work. Right, Rohan, right. Even we all felt that there's a lot of gap between the current engineering students and since it's been around two years of us working in the corporate industry, so there's a lot of gap in the students and the kind of work we do. So okay, now, let's start with the very first question, Rohan. Uh, so you graduated from Thapar in 2017 mm-hmm. and you were campus placed in NXP, if I'm not wrong. Yes, exactly. So start with the very first question. What kind of work you do in NXP and tell us basically about your company. Yeah, which NXP is- as a whole is an automotive plus a radar based company, which uh, manufactures or you can say designs uh, electronic chips uh, for different customers. Uh, I basically work in the automotive section of NXP. In automotive section, we deal with the, uh, all the electronics that a car can possess. Like you can say it's uh, cameras and all, camera serial interfaces, autonomous driving aspect of the car, and uh, all the radar things that the car senses, let's say uh, driverless uh, cars. That is the whole idea behind that. So our customers are basically, let's say, Continental, Mercedes, Audi, BMW, stuff like that. So I basically work uh, in the physical design aspect of that chip. So we basically design all the components uh, that a chip can possess. And our chip goes on a board which uh, an automotive company owns. And that works as an applicative part in the car. Pretty interesting, Rohan. So this was a very uh, high level view of what NXP does. So yes. if I see myself as a current student in the second year or let's say third year electronics and communication student, so I would even much interested in knowing what exactly uh, kind of work you do and what's your one day in NXP like every day. Yeah. So I want to tell you that all this uh, high level stuff, it seems to be a high level stuff, but it all basically narrows down to all the subjects that we study in our course. So uh, this is all just basic stuff. You apply the concepts. I, I want to interrupt here. Most of the people say that whatever we study in engineering doesn't apply to the real world. It's no, all bullshit. Is, I've heard that. That's completely wrong. That is completely wrong uh, in this case. And uh, uh, basically in the core domain that is that doesn't apply at all so you have to be strong enough in the at least in the basics of those uh, that subjects that are important for this uh, vlsi design as far as i'm concerned so which subjects you think were very important for, yeah, your uh, for vlsi uh, perspective i would say the foremost importance uh, is of you can say digital design system digital systems as we study in our college. So all, it contains all the basic uh, digital structures, like flops and gates and sequential and combinational stuff like that. Second the subject that you want to study will be this, uh, you can say, uh, basically VLSI comp- uh, comprises of two parts. First one is the digital domain and second is the analog portion of it. So for digital domain, we have three to four subjects. For analog portion, we have uh, three to four subjects. But basically, most of the uh, work that we do at our college end is uh, mostly digital as analog. Uh, very few students excel in analog electronics and all. So basically, for digital, you need to have uh, digital design systems, CMOS, and uh, you can say computer architecture. That uh, forms a very important part of chip design. And uh, you can also, uh, there are some subjects uh, which we do not study in the college, but they are of utmost importance 
as per when you design a circuit. So that subject is static timing analysis. This uh, I personally didn't study it at all in Thapar. Basically, I found it uh, on the you can say DLSI placements. I used to go to the blogs. I used to, uh, used to read the blogs uh, when I was preparing for this NXP. So there I found that uh, static timing analysis is a subject that you need to know as a prerequisite uh, for applying in the interview. So pretty interesting. Yeah. So I came. Uh, I got this knowledge uh, very late in my uh, study cycle. But uh, now, uh, yes, people can know it straight away whether they are in first year and second year. So static timing analysis is a subject that you don't need to study in depth. But yes, you should be able to understand what the interviewer is asking you. Like uh, some basic uh, terms like setup time, hold time, how is a setup violation created, hold violation, what are the ways of correcting those violations. So this basic stuff, just basic stuff, do you do you need to know that. So you mean to say that most of the people who are placed along with you from Thapa University in NXP, uh, all of them must have a little idea of this subject. Uh, so it's a very crucial thing to say. We as a whole used to discuss uh, what are you preparing for and what, what subjects are you preparing. So yes, uh, uh, we all had some idea regarding the static time analysis. Also, I would say it depends on the level of a student. Uh, whether the inter interviewer is from that domain. Basically, in chip design, we have uh, mainly, as far as backend cycle is concerned, we have four to five teams, and one team is uh, doing this static time analysis. So, if the, your interviewer happens to be the manager of that team, definitely he will ask you one or two questions from static time analysis. So, it works that way. You need to know a whole lot of information, okay. but little, yeah. So that is it. You want to say? Got it. All right. All right. So Rohan, uh, very frequently the doubt which used to uh, came into our mind was CGPA related to CGPA. <laughs> How important CGPA is according to you if someone wants to get into company like yours, NXP. Uh, if someone wants to get into a technical company, the CGPA becomes relatively important. Focus the word relatively. I don't say that CGPA is uh, very important or you can't come in a company like this if you don't have a good CGPA to show. But yes, it does make a first impression uh, on the interviewer that yes, you are a serious guy. You have maintained your CGPA well. So it just uh, tells the interviewer that yes, you have a good understanding of uh, the subjects and that just he tests you based on that. So yes, CGPA just creates a first impression uh, on the interviewer. Nothing uh, you can say, yes, you should be having a CGPA above it if you are coming in these type of things. All right. So my next question is related is uh, I would say for those students who are little confused whether they should go for code or for software or for consultancy like even talking about myself I was uh, during my first and second year I was not sure whether I should prepare right from here for the core company or whether I should go for the software company so what according to you should be the criteria to judge that whether I am fit for your organization the kind of work you do or I am not fit for that. See, uh, when we enter into our college, we are fresh grads. We, we do not know we do not know anything about all these subjects. The categorization and the interests develop uh, when we uh, go into the second year and progress to the third year. So basically, a person uh, gets to know yes that I like coding, whether I like coding or not. As a, at individual level, I would say I. I was pretty clear that I uh, won't be going in coding as I was not comfortable with it, with it. So I was clear, I was pretty clear that yes, I will be uh, targeting the core side of electronics only. I'll, I won't be going uh, to the coding part or you, or you can say the IT or the CS part. Uh, as a back, uh, you can say as an alternative, I was considering the consultancy uh, firms uh, which do not require a, whole lot of skill set in the at the college entrance level so yes 
this was my approach. I think every student has some sort of approach, whether he likes it or not, he would be comfortable doing that part or not. So if a person doesn't like electronics at all and he's studying electronics, so he must prepare himself, uh, he must uh, practice coding and all other stuff apart from electronics from the third year itself. I would say not too much early in the uh, degree, but yes, at least from the third year, you should start seeing what are the companies, what they, do they require, what do I have to uh, uh, develop uh, in myself in order to get place in that company. So in a very basic way, to answer this question, it's like if you love, love your subjects, love CMOS, love digital systems, and these kinds of core subjects, then you are meant for working in this company. Yeah, and NXP is your way to go. <laughs> yes, got it. Exactly. Nice. Thank you so much. So Rohan, uh, let's talk about little bit about now NXP. What kind of work culture you have over there? What kind of facilities it provides you? And then we'll talk about the future of working in this company. Like what kind of life will student have five years, six years down the line? Okay, so NXP as a whole is a very cool company. Uh, there are uh, a lot of perks being uh, working in NXP. So first of all, you you your timings are flexible whether you come at you come at nine thirty or ten or ten thirty. That doesn't matter at all. Uh, all they need to look is that you are performing well or not. So if you complete your work, if you complete it effectively by four thirty or three thirty, then you can leave at three thirty also. So there are no uh, constraints in terms of timing. Also, you don't have to, uh, you can say, uh, and uh, you don't have to register the bench timings. Like some, I have heard some companies that they require uh, the employees to just uh, just uh, plug in their cards while they are sitting on the desk. So they have to complete the necessary eight hours at their bench only. So there's nothing like that in XP in an XP. Uh, when I was an intern, I used to play uh, the whole day. Uh, first of all, the first shift was a badminton shift. Then we used to play pool. Then again during lunch, we used to play badminton and just we used to chill around as there was not uh, no uh, work to do. Uh, we were just learning, so we were handed some documents and we were studying and studying. So it was it is pretty cool in terms of, in terms of your freedom. The work life balance is perfect. Work life balance. I don't think there would be many companies who provide such work life balance. Uh, the managers are pretty understanding. People are helping. They do listen to your doubts. They do resolve your doubts. They know that you are a fresh grad. You won't be knowing much of the stuff related to DLSI. So, yes, in that way, your ramp up to this company would be the smoothest. Yeah, that's why it's, that's why it's a dream company of EC. No doubt in that. It's of a good package, good perks, good to hear this. Uh, so, so once you are into this company, uh, what should be the future of that student? How should he plan out next five, 10 years? See, according to you. See, uh, there are two ways of approaching this. First one is the individualistic way. And second one is the corporate way. For as an individual uh, regarding, uh, if I consider my personal development, so a basic approach would be to just spend at least three years, at least three years in this company, in any company that you join, at least learn, try to learn uh, what are they doing. Try to get, an, uh, get a gist of the whole process that company follows in order to manufacture something. So I think uh, a three years would be a good time uh, before you switch. I, I don't think you should switch too often in companies like these because yes it creates a negative impact on your overall portfolio but yes uh, there is a second cycle also as uh, the growth rate you can see you uh, you must be knowing uh, it is relatively slow in these type of companies uh, as compared to the id ones so yes switch uh, switches are necessary for a person to grow for a person to increase his or her package uh, his uh, monthly income so yes i think uh, first uh, he should spend at least three years in a company he should learn the stuff the most important thing is learning uh, here if you learn a particular skill uh, you can go to any company regarding uh, in the bsi domain they will they will hire you straight away yes so 
So are there uh, any better company than X NXP as well in India? There where is a student uh, can. Do? There is nothing like better. I would say uh, all the companies are working fine. You can say there are many VLSI companies. Intel is there. There is Sandisk. There is NXP. There is Qualcomm. There is uh, ST Microelectronics. There is Nvidia. There is there are. I can I can count twenty at least twenty companies where I can go right now at this very moment. But yes, I'm not going because I have uh, I am in a particular flow. I am learning many things. I am indulged in many activities. So at least three years is a sufficient time. You should you should uh, currently uh, currently you are in this company for around two, two years, years. I think yes yes yes. Two years. Perfect. Moreover, Perfect. it provides you a good promotion. It provides you a good incentive. You can say mm-hmm. increments are pretty nice. They are higher. Uh, one thing to note: they are higher than the uh, other uh, real estate. They are they are slightly higher. They are slightly higher. Okay. So that is uh, that is a so role last. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not uh, able to hear you. Raga, could you come again? Uh, I've done last to you. Yeah. So I think there was some network lag. Yes. There was. Can Can you listen to me? Uh, yes. Yeah. Now I'm your audio. So one last question for you. What do you think actually matters in the college? Is it studies? Is it extra co-curricular activities or something else? For people who are looking to come and join your company. Okay, so uh, if people are targeting NXP, I think uh, co-curricular, co-curricular activities are slightly on the lower side of it. Uh, I think you should focus more on the studies. You should focus more on the basic concepts. Uh, not uh, you should be cramming. It is not like you should be cramming the formulas and all. It, uh, you should be consistent enough. to portray your uh, your journey through the college uh, as a, a solid one yes so it it doesn't mean that you should be studious you should be studying every time and all i basic, i personally think that the college is uh, about maintaining a perfect balance between the study and the extra curricular activities so i don't think uh, the college would be worth it when you don't have any memory Uh, that you remember and it brings a smile on your face. So that is uh, that is necessary. That is that is the first thing that I even now cherish. So it is basically maintaining a balance with studies on slightly higher priority. That's it. I want to add one thing here. So since I and Rohan were batchmates, he is the topper of our EC batch, and on the same side, he does the kind of a fun which. Is at par with any student in the class. Like <laughs> he was an inspiration, how to maintain a balance between studies and between fun. That is something which we actually used to learn from him. Yeah. So that is that is the basic principle uh, in in the whole life of yeah. living the life. I would say in, yes. This exactly, exactly. life is not about work. It is about enjoying it. So right. both both go hand in hand. Amazing, amazing, Rohan. Again, Rohan, thank you so much for taking out time and coming here and talking about insights of your life, insights of NXP. I'm sure this interview gonna be really helpful for all the electronics and communication engineering students, not only of Thap University but of all the other engineering colleges as well. Thank you so much, Rohan, yeah. for your time. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure, my pleasure. Cheers.